Ladies and gentlemen, Chicago and Mr. Kelly's welcomes back Freddie Prince. Thank you, people. Thank you. Thank you very much. Looking good. Nice to be back. Last time I was here was last April. And one night, I said, with any Puerto Ricans here? Right? <laughs> All right. See, this time we got over. Right? Last time I asked, I said, any Puerto Ricans here? One guy. Alone. Corsage, no girlfriend. And to add insult upon injury, sitting near the kitchen. If a busboy dies, they're going to grab him. So I said, why are you sitting back there? Well, they put me here. What do you want me to do? <laughs> Typical attitude of Puerto Ricans. It's like, uh, what those cockroaches? Yeah, leave them with me. I'm watching for you. <laughs> no problem. That's why we didn't make it in the 60s. Eh? Black people made it in the 60s because they wouldn't take that. Major did say, oh, yes, of course, uh, we have a table. Over here, sir, no, sucker, over there. <laughs> but I'm not all Puerto Rican, I'm half Hungarian. Hungarican. Hey, look at that, the Hungarian's in the back now. <laughs> By the door. <laughs> that was a weird combination to grow up with, because I could never figure how my parents met, you know, a gypsy and a Puerto Rican. I asked my mother, and she told me they were on a bus trying to pick each other's pockets. <laughs> my mother's great. She's always been a romanticist. You know, she's always talking about the wedding. Saying, oh, Freddie, my wedding was so beautiful. The flowers, the orchestra playing, your father looked so handsome, you should have been there. <laughs> I was there. <laughs> Not many Puerto Ricans where I live now. I live in Los Angeles. There's about 200,000 Puerto Ricans in one room. <laughs> but it's better than the neighborhood I grew up in. I grew up in New York City in an area called Washington Heights, which was like a ghetto suburb. <laughs> Slums with trees. Even the birds were junkies. <laughs> Dope addict sparrows who didn't know how to fly. <laughs> Just fall out of trees and bother people, right? Tweet, tweet, sucker, give me a quarter. <laughs> a lot of folks think Puerto Ricans are responsible for cockroaches. I want to clear that up right now. We didn't bring them here. When we got here, they were living in the apartments we live in now. But they're strong. I'm afraid of them. They adapt to any environment. They learned how to talk in my building. They would threaten me before I went out. Freddy, where are you going? <laughs> to the grocery store, huh? Don't come back with no roach poison or we lock you out. <laughs> and you can't kill roaches. We should send them to war. <laughs> they are incredibly strong. Now you step on them, you hear them snap. As soon as you lift your foot, they run like hell. <laughs> I think they know that we believe the snap means they're dead. Right now, their foot going... Chump me. <laughs> and they're gone, right? The guy I talk about most, and when I first started, I talked about him a lot, was Mr. Rivera, who was the landlord of the apartment building I grew up in. He was the kind of landlord who never wanted to fix anything in your apartment, but he wanted a key anyway. In case of an emergency, you know, like he was broke. You can complain to him, you know, like my father would tell him, Hey, Rivera! There's no ceiling in our apartment. <laughs> That's okay, the guy upstairs don't walk around much. <laughs> he don't complain, he don't have a floor. <laughs> you just like to make trouble, Mr. Prince. <laughs> Never mind that, when are you gonna fix it? It's not my job, man. <laughs> now, he heard me say that on TV, and I went back to visit my folks when they were still living in New York, and he sees me in the lobby, he says, Freddy, can I speak with you a minute? Come here. My old friend, Freddy. I saw you on TV last night. You're talking about my friend, me. You better stop it. I don't like it. I said, if you don't like it, shut off the set. He goes, it's not my job, man. 
other things that give people a wrong impression of Puerto Ricans are like movies, like West Side Story set us back a hundred years. And we were only in the country 20. Because <laughs> if you saw the movie, it made people think that all we did was stand in streets going, They thought we were gay ballet dancers. <laughs> and the movie became so popular, such a hit, that the New York Chamber of Commerce had to keep up the image about Puerto Ricans in New York. So they hired Gene Kelly and Fred Astaire to choreograph every Puerto Rican wino in Harlem <laughs> for the bus tours from the Midwest that would come in and see Harlem and tour the city, right? And the winos around the corner going, hey man, if that bus don't show up by 4.30, I ain't dancing for nobody. <laughs> But the bus would always show up, and they go into that, ding, bang, ding, and people in the bus go, look at that, Mark, just like on TV, honey. Those people can dance, boy. The most unbelievable scene in the picture was 2 a.m., the young lovers, Tony and Maria, are on the fire escape, vowing their love for each other. And Tony goes, Maria, I love you. She goes, shh, my papa will hear you. But I'm whispering, shh. Next thing they go, tonight, tonight. <laughs> Tough father had to be deaf, I have pillows in his ears. <laughs> That'd have been a black neighborhood, right? Two in the morning singing, they'd have gotten shot. <laughs> you doing on a fire escape singing, sucker? <laughs> People trying to sleep here. Give my gun, mama. <laughs> you gonna sing all the way to funeral parlor, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing that gave people the wrong impression of Puerto Ricans is most people think that all we do is stand in the streets going, Mira, mami, linda, oye. Mira. Oh, what's the matter? You can't talk with me? Who needs you, ugly? I got two wives, man. 18 kids I don't know about. <laughs> when streaking was popular, we loved it because the girls were already naked before we made noise. Mami, coño. <laughs> Hey, Bobby! Bobby, come look at this, man. Hey, that's my sister, man. <laughs> the hell are you looking at, sucker? You're gonna marry her now. <laughs> yeah, New York was serious. You couldn't own a yellow car. I had a yellow Plymouth once. I stopped for a red light, a guy jumped in. 84th Street and Broadway, baby. What you mean you ain't a cab, sucker? Well, don't be stopping at the traffic light then. <laughs> See, but there's a code among the muggers and criminals in New York. Like, no mugger in New York will hit you if you have money at the time of the holdup. And like, if they say, stick them up, and you go, well, I'm broke. So my mother would give me a dollar a day criminal money. <laughs> Say, Freddy, if the criminal bothered you, don't fight, give him the money. You can always make more money, but never get your life back. So this one guy, Henry, would rob me every day. <laughs> yeah, I knew him. If he was sick, I'd take the money to his house. You know? <laughs> So one day it was snowing really hard, and I said, well, Henry's not going to come out in this weather, and I'm not going to his house, so I spent a dollar. <laughs> sure enough, after school, Henry was right out there waiting for me. Where's the dollar, Fred? I spent it, Henry. I'm going to tell your mother. <laughs> right, I get home, my mother says, Henry called me, you spent his money, pow! In New York, there's one good place to visit, the Central Park Zoo. There's a sign in there. They're really dumb. It says, please do not annoy the monkeys. What, are they busy? <laughs> How do you get on a monkey's nerves? Right? Hey, King Kong was a chump. <laughs> Fay Ray was cheating on him. <laughs> and there's this one woman who's been going there every morning faithfully for 20 years. She's there every morning at 9 a.m. to feed the monkeys. Where are the monkeys today? Lady, give them a break. They're inside. Well, what on earth are they doing, by God? If you must know, they're mating. Oh, the monkeys are making love. How dear. <laughs> Would they come out for peanuts? 
Lady, would you? No fun where I grew up. Like, in my neighborhood, I, my best friend was this dude, Nat, black dude who played trumpet. And I was in the band, I played drums. and So we were hanging out. And uh, Nat was about 6'8", but five inches of it was his hair and three inches was platform. <laughs> Actually, he was about six foot, six foot one around there. But he looked good, he was clean, you know. And he initiated me into an all black gang called the Royal Lords, because right? I wanted to join, it was the only gang in the neighborhood. I didn't ever fought anybody. And they just had a gang to have a gang. And the first day they initiated me, he said, Fred, come here. This ain't usual procedure for the Royal Lords. We're going to take a Puerto Rican in. We've been getting a lot of static. <laughs> How about we in an equal opportunity gang? <laughs> so we're going to let you in, my man. But you got to get your initiation. And the initiation is ask Ralphie. See that fella eating the building? <laughs> Ask Ralphie how his father do the boogaloo. So me, I didn't know better. He said, Ralphie, how'd your father do the boogaloo? My father ain't got no legs, man. <laughs> I kill you. What's wrong with you, sucker? <laughs> it wasn't true as it turned out. But they got me good, right? They put me on. And we all went to the same school. And we'd mess with the teachers. Like a uh, teacher would go, uh, Nat, could you spell murder for me? No, but I can demonstrate it. <laughs> And that hit me to things. He said, black folks, when they get mad, their voice goes high and loud. <laughs> and they're talking to a girl, it goes real low and soft, romantic, right? So God forbid a brother's arguing with his old lady, right? Telling her, please wait for me. And arguing with a dude, telling him he's going to kill him. And it sounds like, say, sucker, don't get in my face no more. I'll whip your nuts and ass. What's wrong with you? Listen, baby, I'm you just a minute, right? <laughs> if a black dude can't fight, he can threaten you great. I'll break your nose if you bleed. I'll kill your mama. <laughs> my father came to get me uh, out of the hospital once. I was in a gang fight. I got hurt on my arm. And so I went to this Puerto Rican hospital. Pablo's Hospital Body and Fender Repair. <laughs> they had an ad once in the paper. Doctor wanted no experience necessary. <laughs> And they had an x-ray machine in the hallway. For 50 cents, you got these four little x-rays. <laughs> and I knew I was in trouble. I heard them call a the doctor. Dr. Gomez, Dr. Gomez, get you us to the operating room, please. <laughs> he comes in. Ch -ch -ch. Okay, where's the kidneys? <laughs> then the anesthetist comes by. You want to buy some dope? You won't feel nothing. <laughs> and we didn't have any luxuries, like little buzzers to ring for the nurse. We had to go, nurse, honey, my come mommy. I asked the doctor, I said, where's the recovery room? He goes, nobody recover here, you die. Oh. <laughs> it was incredible. That's the style. New York is, you know, you got to rap for your life in a few seconds or that's it. I got arrested once. I was driving without license, insurance, or registration. It wasn't my car, I didn't care. <laughs> and I had my man Nat with me. We are in the south driving, but I'm going at the speed limit. I'm not breaking any law. All of a sudden I hear, Oh, God. Cop comes out. <clears throat> you know what you did? <laughs> no, officer. Hell, you don't. <laughs> Where are you from? New York. Bit out your way, ain't you? <laughs> Where are you going? School. <laughs> you know your left rear taillight was out of order? No. Tell your friend to get his head out of the glove compartment, will you? <laughs> I'm going to let you go. Okay, schoolboy. Give you a break today, but if I see you tomorrow, you're in big trouble. Beat it. Ready to let me go? Ready to give me a break? And that's his. Hold on, you got rights. <laughs> Come back here, pig. <laughs> you looking to make a bribe? Don't mess with my friend when he's been drinking. <laughs> what can I tell you? Six months. I switched cars immediately. Now I got a Puerto Rican mobile. 
That's usually a 64 Chevy with the pom-poms in the antennas and the little dog in the window with the head going up and down. <laughs> My theme is that we're all the same, right? We all have a heart. We all cry when certain things happen. We all laugh when certain things happen. And uh, we all pay tax, hopefully, or some of us will be separated from the rest of the group. <laughs> There's one group, though, that does intrigue me. Chinese people. They're so quiet. Proud, mysterious, where do they go at night? <laughs> you ever see them at a party? You want some of this? You never see a Chinese cop? What would they bust you for? No such and collar, wrinkle sleeve, let's go. <laughs> and they don't bother to learn English, right? Any ethnic group comes here from another country, in a week they know how to say, hello, how are you, give me something to eat, that girl looks good. I think they have this thing in their mind. They figure they're going to take over in two years anyway. Why bother to learn an obsolete language? <laughs> in school, they always had their homework six months ahead. <laughs> Teacher would say, for tomorrow, I'm not already. <laughs> Why can't everybody be like little Tommy here? Yeah, we'll be like him after school. <laughs> but since kung fu movies came out, that's their best publicity because nobody bothers them anymore. I mean, you've seen those movies. They pull your eyes out and show them to you before you die. What a Seven! No way, Jose. I used to go to the laundry. Can you have this ready for Saturday? Now it's whenever you have time. You don't even have to wash it. Just wrap it up in the paper. Like when you mix ethnic groups, I, I talk about how we're all the same, we're all different. My friend Nat went to take kung fu from a 70-year-old Chinese man, Mr. Wong. It was a great confrontation, right? Excuse me, Mr. Wong, I'd like to take some Kung Fu. Wong says, what -ah! <laughs> If you know Kung Fu, you'll be able to avoid that. <laughs> no fooling, brother. <laughs> it's the reason I came here, to take some class. Could I take about two weeks? He goes, what -ah! And if you know Kung Fu, you'll be able to avoid that. And that's it. <laughs> you know niggas, you'll be able to avoid that. <laughs> Different people are recognizing me now. Like this one woman, she asked me for an autograph. She was ashamed to say it was for herself. You know, she said, can you write this for my son? What's his son's name? It was Marie. <laughs> said, you've given him a rough life. <laughs> I like when people recognize me. Like old ladies recognize me and they grin a lot. They go, mm-hmm. <laughs> You're you. <laughs> That's you. And black people, they recognize me. They take an hour to make sure they write. Is that my man? <laughs> Television. <laughs> yeah. Woo. Oh, man, me and my old lady watch you every week. We love you. Mama, come here and meet Merv Griffin. My people recognize me too. Hey, Freddie Prince, you made it. You're making money now. Stick him up. <laughs> From traveling, I've discovered the difference in the three cities, New York, Chicago, and Los Angeles. Like New York, like I'm saying, because of the crime, people are uptight and paranoid. You can't blame them. Chicago, this is not just because I'm here either. I found people very sweet, right? Sweeter than most cities. In Los Angeles, they're high a lot. And you can tell when you drive a car. You know sometimes you're driving on the expressway and somebody's door is open? <laughs> or at least slightly ajar, right? And you want to warn them, right, in New York. Better be careful there, your door is open. Mind your own damn business. <laughs> drive your own car. Hope you fall out. Ha <laughs> ha. Chicago. Hey, careful, your door is open. Well, I have four of them. Would you like one? <laughs> Los Angeles. Hey, your door is open. Oh, wow. <laughs> I didn't know I had a door, baby. <laughs> but thanks for telling me, man, because doors are like life. They open and close, right? You want to come to McDonald's and eat 80 hamburgers with me?
People say LA has a lot of smog. That's marijuana smoke. <laughs> Walk through the street, you get a contact high. And the cops pull you over, they're loaded. And, Woo! What I do, officer? Hell if I know. <laughs> Scared you! <laughs> I hate drug parties because there's always one dude who's an expert. <laughs> Let me try what you got, man. Did you buy it without showing it to me first? I told you, don't buy anything unless you let me try it. Oh, I hope you got beat on it. <sighs> Colombian 71. <laughs> you know, it's a Marlboro you gave him, right? <laughs> he don't know anymore, right? but the junkies, some of them know, right? Like, they go to court, and they know how to lie. Right? Your Honor, man, I'm straight now, baby. <laughs> this cop is just trying to get a promotion from me, man. I didn't steal no car. Do I look like I can drive? <laughs> I don't need your lousy car. I'm a track star. Look at me, I'm in great shape. I run 100 yards in nine seconds with a color TV in each arm. <laughs> Gotta believe him, right? Because of junky burglars, we didn't believe in Santa Claus. Christmas Eve, my father would tell me, somebody comes down that chimney, you blow his damn head off. <laughs> ho, 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 shit, you shoot him. I'll tell you how bad the burglars were. I once bought a stereo that was originally mine. He comes up to me, it's from your house, buy it again. You know it works. <laughs> but that's the thing with crime. People are buying dogs, guns, taking kung fu lessons. Right? Like most people buy German shepherds because they're great with the doorbell, right? <laughs> Neighbors move, right? I bought a Puerto Rican shepherd. <laughs> Very macho. <laughs> Who is it? I tried to paper train him. I put newspaper in the bathroom. He'd go in, sit on the bowl, and read him. <laughs> Reason I knew he was a Puerto Rican shepherd, if I'd take him out in the street and he'd see a pool, he'd go, Bow wow, honey, oh yeah! <laughs> Looking good! <laughs> Drinking's coming back, though. Yeah, right? People are bending some elbows. <laughs> My father had a drinking buddy, Phil. They drank together for 45 years. And Phil would drink two-fifths of scotch a night straight. And he died of a cold. <laughs> so my father had to get drunk before we went to the funeral because he couldn't bear to see him. And he goes, oh, God. That's not my Phil. He looks terrible. Come on, we'll take him for a drink. <laughs> Pa, have you no respect for the dead? Let the man rest in peace. No, he's my friend, and I want to take him for one last taste. Are you going to help me? Come on, we'll take him in a taxi. Nobody will see him. <laughs> we can take him to Pablo's bar. Pablo don't know he died. <laughs> you carry your end, I'll carry mine. We'll hold him. So we went to Pablo's bar, and we're standing there, and we prop him up. <laughs> Phil's there stiff. We're holding him. And Pablo don't know. He says, Phil, you look terrible. <laughs> You're catching the flu. I had it last week. Let me give you some brandy. Clear your nose right up. Don't worry. So we're drinking all night, drinking Phil's drinks. He's here like this. <laughs> About 2 a.m., Pablo's starting to close up. Fellas, I'm going home. Can you pay me your top? is uh, $30. My father says, sure, I'll pay you. Forgot my wallet. Oh, I left it on the dresser. Phil, you take care of it. Come on, Freddy. <laughs> Good night, Mr. Prince. Yeah, we'll see you tomorrow. Phil, listen, I love you. You're a great customer, but I owe oh, you look drunk. Come on, wake up. I'm going to drive you home. Come on, let's go. Phil, listen, I expect an answer at least from you. You have to respect me. I'm a man, too. I missed the number today by one, Phil. <laughs> not in the mood. You're not paying, huh? Boom! Knocks him down off the stool. My father goes back in and says, Pablo, I just seen you kill Phil. <laughs> Pablo says, I have to, man, you pull a knife on me. (laughs) 
People lie in the right situation. As we know by watching a lot of our government figures. Eh. Like I, I kind of like Gerald Ford, though, because he's cute. I'm trying to pick him up, right? Yay! I tickle him. I said, would you love to tickle a president? Come on, stop it. I'm the president. Eh, you're no president. I liked him, though, when he came out on his porch the first day he was made president. He was so happy. But did you see him try to hold it in? It was great, right? And his family's in the window going, Yay! And he's going, uh, I'm, I'm very happy to be president. And I wish the people could have decided that it would have happened under nicer circumstances. <laughs> and poor Mr. Nixon. <laughs> Let's leave him alone now. There's been enough trouble. Would you excuse me? I'm choked up, gentlemen. Goes in his house, closes the door, and you hear, We're in the money! We're in the money! And he was, because then he said, I'm against big business, I'm for the working man. He picks Rockefeller for vice president. <laughs> Rockefeller sounds like he has a person caught in his throat, don't he? I'd like to say to the Congress at this time, he used to be governor of New York. He'd come in there once every six years when he was campaigning and try and be Puerto Rican for a day. I'd like to say, K Posada, my Hermanos, Latinos. Hey, Puerto Ricans are going, go to hell, give us some money. <laughs> then there's Henry Kissinger, the great negotiator. People had a lot of faith in him because he would stop wars. Now they see that the treaties don't last. And he got all those girls. I don't know how. <laughs> and now he negotiated some great deals, I admit, but he couldn't negotiate in a gang war in the ghetto. <laughs> hey, wouldn't you love to see that? Please, boys, boys, uh, the colored fellows get Jerome Avenue, the Spanish kids get Lindenstrasse. <laughs> The hell with that when you gonna fix us up with Jill St. John? <laughs> Henry? <laughs> there's a lot of leaders, like religious leaders, like there's the, uh, the little guru Maharaji, 17-year-old perfect master of the world. Dig his spiel. I'm the true perfect master of the world. If you want to follow me, you must give up all your material possessions and put them in the back of my Mercedes Benz. <laughs> Now, there were reports in the paper that he owed back taxes, he was drinking, he was going out with girls. So his mother, who's the head of the church back in India, denounced him, said he's no longer the perfect master. So he fires his mother. <laughs> That's it, Ma. You and me are finis. Right? So I said, he's going to get paid back by God. And God did pay him back, because he played the Apollo Theater in New York City, which is an all-black theater. Their God is Ray Charles, and that's it. <laughs> and so he comes out with, you must follow me, I'm the perfect master of the world. They loved him. And follow you, why? Where are you going, sucker? <laughs> well, give me a rock. I'll knock him off stage. <laughs> you want some money? Get a job, turkey. <laughs> I'll work. Drag his ass off stage. Bring on the temptations. <laughs> then there was Nixon. I'm mad at Nixon because there was never a Puerto Rican astronaut. What are they afraid of? All the way to the movie, blow the horn, play the radio. <laughs> Stick our head out the window. Mira, linda, honey, oye. Get to the moon, I'll load the moon buggy, the hubcaps are missing. <laughs> Astronaut Rodriguez, what are your first words from the moon? Looking good! <laughs> if you're an ethnic group in this country, and you're getting subjugated, they let you move up as soon as they find a new ethnic group. Because someone has to clean the toilet. And every group did it. Black, white, Puerto Rican, Irish, Italian, Polish, everybody. And no group liked it, and some groups voiced their opposition to it more than others. Like black people going, what the hell am I doing here? I'm a genius, and I'm cleaning the toilet. I'll be flushing stuff away. <laughs> he makes it Puerto Ricans get in. God, it's not my job. Please take me away from here. <laughs> and that's why Chinese people are so quiet. They know they're next. <laughs> and I hope they make it. But then justice will prevail. Indians will get in, blow up the toilets, nobody can go, and they take their country back. <laughs> But they never tell it like it is, right? Like if you read in the Bible, Noah and the Ark, I'm offended by that personally because Noah took two of everything. Where was the Puerto Rican? <laughs> the cook, Julio. <laughs> Noah would go over to him. So Julio, how are you enjoying the cruise? Terrible, man. You said we were stopping in the Bahamas. What happened? <laughs> All I can see is animals scrapping in a boat. <laughs> where are you going to find a newspaper big enough for the elephant? <laughs> Julio, you know, if you don't like it, you could clean it up yourself. 
It's not my job, man. I was talking about crime before. I got the perfect answer to stick up. Next time somebody says stick them up, pull something out of your nose. Stick them up. Whoa! Are you crazy, man? Don't touch me with that. Hit my money. Hit the gun. Police! Police! Guy pulled the book on me, man. Search him. I bet you find some tissues. If you're driving in Chicago anywhere and a cop pulls you over and starts writing a ticket, pull one out of your nose, he'll be in Arizona tomorrow. <laughs> then there's the other one they never talk about. Now, all mothers have said this throughout history to all their children. When I was four, my mother would tell me this. I'm 20 now, she still tells me. Don't wear those ripped underwear. What if a car hits you and they take you to the hospital? <laughs> I always thought that meant the first thing the doctor does. Check his drawers. Look at that hole. Call his mother. I don't work on him. <laughs> I used to carry a spare pair of underwear with a note. In case of accident, please put these on. <laughs> and going to the bathroom, that's taboo. Like when you go to the bathroom at somebody's house, are you like me? You don't want them to hear you? <laughs> Turn on the water, cough. <laughs> <laughs> Aim for the side of the bowl. But that's no good, because then you got to get toilet paper. Oh, God. I made a mess here. Some people just stick their leg in and let it run down. That's as quiet as you can get. Then the other taboo is sex. But the movies make sex so beautiful. They make it much better than it is in real life. When is the last time you made love and you heard violins going... Two people make love. The next morning, they kiss right away. You know your breath tastes like a zookeeper's heel. You kiss like this. I love you, mama, but in an hour. I'll kiss you in an hour. Nothing like sex. Nothing like it. And guys love sex, right? We love it because we like it when girls make noise in bed. Because that's like cheering. Right, guys? When a girl goes, oh, that's like, all oh, right! Boom, 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 boom. And different girls say different things in bed, too, depending how they're brought up. Like Jewish girls, if they were pressed when they're young and read a lot of books, years later they sounded. Oh, that feels so good, she said with an ecstatic grin, and she flailed her arms wildly. <laughs> Spanish girls get annoyed in bed. Don't touch my behind, Felix. <laughs> Just don't touch my behind. Right? Black chicks, you could be going 90 miles an hour, sweating your life away. He goes, that it? <laughs> Thank you and good night. <laughs>